Uh, now it is time to build the whole chain of light groups, one by one. We already have the environment and the first key light. Now I'm gonna press Shift D to duplicate the mix node and plug it in. Uh, then drag and drop the light to key zero two in the open socket. Again, there's the mix factor to control the amount, and it technically be larger than one. Let's say five, fifty-five, whatever. I'm going to make some room for a few more nodes here. Plug in one more mix. Um, hook the rim light up. We will play with the ratios later. Now I'm just testing this stuff out. I'm just curious how it looks. Come on. M toggles nodes on and off like that. Now on to the sun group. So shift D. The mix node is still set to add, by the way. Okay, uh, uh, then the first practical to do. Very, very nice. Let's fast track our setup a bit until pretty much everything is connected. Cool. Uh, sometimes the connections go across the screen like that when we click and drag uh, our output around. Alternatively, the F shortcut draws the connection if the start and destination nodes are both selected. Just a quick tip. And here goes the last one. Ooh, the light group chain is fully formed and ready for our adjustments. As we are composing the raw noisy passes straight from cycles, they have to be denoised eventually. Uh, the best placement for the denoise node is probably right after the light group's chain and before any potential color grading and other post-processing. Um, to make it look best, uh, the albedo and normal inputs should be filled in though. They can be found there, in the render layers. So here we go. I didn't know about the F shortcut to draw connections between nodes and recording this video, I swear. I'm doing it in a good old drag and drop manner. Okay, the denoise can be a bit slow, certainly takes a few seconds to process, so I'm muting it with M shortcut for the time being, uh, to toggle it back on later after, after we finish some more stuff. To double down on the sequence of actions, the post-pro adjustments of any kind, like color balance, will come into play after denoising, which will eventually be turned back on when we are ready to save the final composite, if that all makes sense. That is our structure uh, of how we treat post-processing. First uh, the light groups chain, then denoising, temporarily turned off, then the rest of the adjustments. Okay, now we can delete the color balance node that was meant as a quick demo, and I also shut down the denoise for now to keep it nice and fast. Before we go any further, I uh, just wanted to say that there are a few things that we can do to speed up the denoise node. With the accurate type of pre-filter, it's a solid few seconds to calculate. It becomes a lot faster, well, with the fast, or better yet, non-type of pre-filtering. It loses some of the quality as well, but who cares just yet? That being said, I I'm still switching it off altogether for the time being. The fastest option by far. Yet another hustle that I'm willingly submit to for the common good is giving descriptive names to all the nouns. This way we will know what light group is doing what. Just thought I would mention. So I'm uh, right click on the node, typing in the name and just repeating the process over and over again until it's done. This one is lens flare apparently. These are our light groups laid out really nicely with the descriptive names. Now we are ready to start playing with the light ratios. At last we can play with our light groups to relight the composition in some interesting way. How about turning it into the silhouette lighting setup? A moody backlighting type of look. I'm resizing the canvas with the help of V and Alt V shortcuts. Alt and middle mouse button to move it. Okay, so to get the silhouette lighting, the key light should be ditched first. Boom, gone. The second key as well. 
the rim light, on the other hand, should get the promotion. This is it. I'm gonna type in 5 in there, or even 15. And out of a sudden, it took a step forward, a dramatic moonlight situation. The environment ambience is a bit of a show breaker right now, we should dim it down. As it doesn't have a mix factor, uh, we need to use the exposure node instead to control its uh, contribution. The environment serves as our fill light, so technically we are going full chiaroscuro by negating it. So be it. Never mind, leaving just a little bit of ambient light, just a touch. I thought we could give our backlighting a more pronounced dramatic shade of blue. That can be done by interjecting the mix node before the rim light group using the color blending mode and changing the color to fairly saturated cyan or something. How saturated should it be? I don't know. I chickened out, <laughs> you know, to go with the full blue. Just some not very brave pale cyan. The sunshine should be ditched as well, so we can play our moonlight card. What else? Does it make sense to make our practical lights brighter? It would probably make sense to make it brighter in the night setting, right? I think so. How about some complementary color for it? Say, a shade of orange to play with a warm versus cold contrast? How about that? Hmm, solid. Now giving some more exposure to the top practical as well. Let's see the background practicals on the right, or on the left rather, and on the right as well. Now thinking about reducing the exposure of the extra practical lights, you know, to support the blob of darkness look. Okay, as for the dust, uh, we'll just leave it be, it is okay. The sensor's backlighting could be a stronger focal point, all things considered, so multiplying its effect by, I don't know, by 25. Could be a good idea to do some look dev to play with the color variations now, as it's one of the most prominent bright spots in the image right now, changing its color will affect the mood big way, no doubt about it. It is fairly amazing how easy it is to separate the lighting passes for different lights, and emissive materials like that with light groups. It makes it extremely enjoyable once the tedious part is moved out of the way. The part where we need to prepare our scene in order to play with the light ratios like that. Finally, the lens flare deserves to be way brighter. It is motivated by the main direction of light and intensity of light source somewhere at the back of the set. So it's all good, I think. It's pretty cool now. Now it should be a good time to turn on denoising, take a step back and congratulate ourselves with a totally different lighting setup emerging without re-rendering anything, simply playing with uh, the light ratios and colorization and that is it. Pretty amazing. On a second thought, there's too much intensity in the backlight, probably worth dividing it by two. Returning to color management, uh, Will the higher contrast base level fit the idea of this lighting scheme much better? It could very well be the case, at least uh, one of the possible interpretations. Personally, I don't like to crush the contrast as much, though. I believe it is worth leaving at least some fill in the shadows, even in such extreme low-key backlighting styles. Alright, when we are happy with our new mood, we can jump into the image editor, reference the viewer node and save the result. Image, save as. Here we no longer necessarily need the 32-bit formats. If we aren't going to apply any post-processing, we can just save it in one of the display referred 8-bit formats instead, like an 8-bit TIFF or PNG, or JPEG if you want it to be compressed, or whatever, and it'll be fine.